Desire you have not acquired, and there will be no form. You only get form when your thought ceases to be a desire and becomes an acquired state of consciousness. When an acquired state of consciousness is achieved, you are able to rest without seeing manifestation in the objective realm. Amen. Mm. And that's where God wants to bring you to a place of rest. You can have a lot of calamities going on on the outside of you, but do you have peace on the inside of you? It has nothing to do with what's going on in the objective realm. That is not your reality. The reality is what are you conscious of? Because only the things you are conscious of are the fruit that you're going to produce in life. So what are you conscious of? What is the very thing that you desire? What is the very thing you're believing for? Because that is the thing that is going to begin to exist in your experience. So Bishop, no matter what's going on outside of you, even if you're not seeing the manifestation of the thing you wanted, you're supposed to be at rest and at peace, even if hell is breaking out in your life and you already saw good in your mind. And then when you come out of your meditation and things are still wrong, you're supposed to just rest and be at peace knowing that it's already done? Most definitely. And that's the whole secret of success, my ability to rest mm. in my imagination even when I don't see the right formation. So even if somebody, um, you're sick and somebody says they heal you, you have to just accept that you are healed and not worry about the actual sneezing, the coughing, or whatever it is that's happening to you. Right. You get excited about the word that has already declared you healthy, whole, complete, and divine. And that becomes your reality. Though your experience is one thing, your reality is another. Because see, your reality is the world behind these eyes, not the world that is before these eyes. Amen. Okay, read on. It is up to you to be all that you want to be, to do, and all that you want to have all that you want to have. Life is being, doing, and having. Be, do, and have those things that you know you are supposed to be being, doing, and having. Stop limiting yourself. God knows no limitation in you. If you want to change, repent in your image or in your imagination. Your imagination removes limitations, allowing you to start moving into new aspects of creation. Good. If a word goes, if a word goeth, a word can also come. Let me say this. If a word goeth, then a word can also come. The prophet says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Isaiah 55 and 11. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the word that we speak is a living entity. Your words will not return unto your void, which says this. This is very powerful. Every word that you speak will bring forth the corresponding action of that which you have spoken. Some of your blessings are only one word away. Some of your miracles are only one thought away. Do you hear me? One word away. You said also one thought away. Yes, because thinking is speaking. Oh, that's what you mean by you say speaking lowly. Yes, because see, every time you think, Reverend Run, oh, you're Jesus. speaking. That's why the Bible says, as a man thinketh. Thinketh, see, you didn't say speaketh. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So you are your thoughts, even though you didn't get a chance to utter it yet. So speaking is not always just coming out your mouth. Speaking a word is just what you're thinking. A matter of fact, God doesn't hear a word you speak out of your mouth. The only mouth he hears speaking is the mind. For there really is no mouth. There's only a mind that happens to vocalize itself through a mouth. So you could be sitting there thinking something about somebody, and actually that's just like speaking about them. It is speaking. That's why the Bible says if you just look upon a woman to lust after her, you've committed adultery. But wait a minute. All I did was look. <laughs> See, it's your thoughts. And that's why we need to understand that whenever we're not prosperous or having a breakthrough in a particular area, that's because your thoughts need to be ironed out. And until you iron out your thoughts, you're not going to get the right response. So thinking is just speaking low. Every day of the year. It's crazy. Amen. Okay, let's skip on down here to um, detox from tox toxic people. 
People that are toxic to your temple must be put out of your life because there's no place in you for them to live. Good. The scripture Ooh. says, give no place to the devil. That's in Ephesians 4 and verse 27. If you give a place to the enemy, then your enemy will show up. The only enemy that you have in life is the enemy that you've given a place setting to. If you give no place to the devil, then there'll be no place for the enemy to have an experience in you or around you or through you. Give no place to the devil. Amen. And so we begin to see some things here. The moment you begin realizing that God in you is working and demonstrating miracles, you will begin to see those wishes that you desire to happen in you and manifest through you because as he is, so are you in this world. Say with me, as he is, so am I in this world. Read on, Reverend Run. On another occasion, Jesus said that this kind goeth forth not by prayer and fasting, Matthew 7, 21. Why? Because once you begin to operate from a realm where you give no place to the enemy, you begin to eliminate the place from which it stands. Jesus also said in another verse of Scripture, The prince of this world cometh and have nothing in me. Why does the prince of this world have nothing in me? Because the prince of this world has no ground, no place in me on which to stand. Good. Everybody say with me, the prince of this world, of this world. Has, no has no ground. See, the only ground he has is the ground you give it. If you give no ground to the devil, if you give no place to the devil, there will be no ground for him to raise up a standard or a stand. The enemy can only stand in your life to the degree you give ground. Eliminate the ground. The enemy cannot stand. Now I'm going to show you something about this power of elimination. Revelations 20, verse 1 through verse 3, it speaks about Satan being thrown into the bottomless pit. Now some of you are waiting for a bottomless pit. But can I tell you that the bottomless pit is when you take the key and do not give ground to the enemy? Then that means when the enemy comes to stand in your life, he is falling. He's in a bottomless pit. What's a bottomless pit? He has no ground to stand. Everybody say it with me, no ground to stand. Say it again, no ground to stand. Let's now go to Man in the Mirror, page 67. Many people have gone through life breaking mirrors, hoping that their face would change. They break the mirror because they do not like the reflection that was given back in the form of a mate or a friend or a loved one. However, what they see is only a reflection of who they are, of who they are. Your mate can only be the reflection of who you are. If you do not like what you see in your mate, then you must go in and change you. Good. Now, this is very important. If you don't like what you see in someone else, you've got to make that change in you. And when you make that change in you, then that change happens outside of you. And you know, Reverend Run, a lot of people don't want to take that kind of responsibility. That is a very heavy responsibility to take because you, it's almost like you want to look at the person in front of you saying, why aren't you doing right? And actually you can see them how you want to see them and they become what you see. They're yes. only what you make them. Exactly. A matter of fact, everyone can only give back to you what you've dished out for yourself. And that's why you've got to begin to do the checkup from the neck up from within. Because when you go within, then you begin to do the adjustment. Mm. And that is the power of miracles. That's the way miracles happen. Well, that's why some people will look at um, a person one way. One person will say... The boss doesn't like me, and another person would say, the boss loves me. Yeah. Um, and when you start to understand this, you'll begin to see that the very thing you want to see manifested in your life, you got to get yourself in the picture. That's why we say you got to first feel as though you deserve it. Until you feel as though you deserve it, you don't get it. So you can feel like you don't deserve anything and not get it. Exactly. And as long as you don't feel as though you don't deserve it, it will be kicked away from you until you give yourself permission to have it. Whoa. 
Amen. And that's why you got to keep taking that look. So if there's a mate that's not giving you what you feel as though should be.